this crochet project you're going to need your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook as well as a tapestry needle and this tapestry needle they also can be called a darning needle if you have the pointy end usually it's the darning needle and then the blunt one is usually the tapestry needle but um, I like the pointy end so it's actually a darning needle and I like it because it has the large eye and it's easy to slip the yarn through for burying loose yarn ends but this is my main darning needle that I use and for this project if you're using buttons or similar buttons to the ones that I used or the jingle bells you're going to need a slender darning needle so this one still has the pointy end and it has a smaller eye so a slender eye is still large enough to get your yarn through. If you still have trouble getting the yarn through, you can use your DMC yarn threader, which works great. And then that will help you bring the yarn through the slender eye of the darning needle. And I like to use these style of buttons. So for the outfit, whether it's the girl outfit or the boy outfit, you're going to need two buttons. So I chose these buttons for one of the boy outfits that I'm making. It has two skunks. And this is what it looks like with the buttonhole on the back. So I need a slender enough uh, darning needle to fit through with my yarn. So if you don't want to sew it with yarn, you could use a regular sewing needle and thread too. So you don't have to use your tapestry needle. But you'll need if you're making a girl and a boy elf, you'll need two buttons for each outfit. So these are just some examples of the ones that I'm using. And I used reindeer, two reindeer buttons for one of them. And then for the girls, you can ha make buttons for the ears. So I used candy canes, like this one, for one of the girl elves. And then I'm going to use one of each, a lollipop and a candy cane for the other one. Now if you don't want to use buttons for the ears, you can use real Christmas earrings too that dangle from the ears. That will work as well. Now for the shoes, you can make them with a pom-pom on the end. I used my Clover, small Clover pom-pom maker, which works great for this kind of project. I also used this pom-pom maker for the hat, so the pom-pom that goes at the tip of the hat. If you don't have a pom-pom maker and you don't want to buy one, I have a video tutorial. It's the Crochet Baby Owl hat, and I show how to make a pom-pom using cardboard. I'm also going to show how to make this scarf for both the boy and the girl elf, and I put a pom-pom on each end of the scarf. For the boy elf, I'm going to change it up and put a bell on the shoe instead of a pom-pom. So if you want to, instead of a pom-pom, you want to use a bell too, a little jingle bell. I used my 12 millimeter bells, so the tapestry needle, the slender one, will fit through the back to sew it in place. And you'll need two of these if you're going to be using jingle bells, for one for each shoe. I love these safety doll eyes. You're going to need a pair of safety doll eyes for each doll that you're making. These have oh, the hand-painted Christmas wreath all around it. And they're just gorgeous. These are by 6060 eyes. I have some more coming in. These are on the silver. So I have some more silver ones coming in because I think they're really pretty but I also ordered some gold ones too. So she has an option between the silver and the gold. And again, these are the 15 millimeter hand painted and they have a wreath, Christmas wreath around the eyes and they're just really gorgeous. For the yarn, since I'm making so many of the elves, I got the Crafter's Secret, Big Secret yarn. So it's a very large skein and the color is Magnolia Way. But if you're only making one or two dolls, actually you can even make two dolls with only one of the smaller skeins if you wanted. So you don't need to get a large one unless you plan on making 
a lot of them, which I am. So again, I use the larger Crafters Big Secret, and the color is Magnolia Way. If you like the hair color that I chose for mine, I made mine with Karen Simply Soft by Yarnspirations. Here's some information about this yarn. And the color is chocolate. On video tutorial, I'm making my girl elf with Red Heart Super Saver for the hair. This gorgeous orange color. Here's some information about this yarn. And the color is pumpkin. So if you like this color, this is perfect for the fall season too because the pumpkin color is um, perfect for making pumpkin, crochet pumpkin items. And here's more information about this yarn. For the mouth, I used my Red Heart Super Saver yarn. You only need a little bit of it. This is some of my leftover yarn. And this color is pretty in pink. Here's some information about this yarn. For the girl shoes and hat, I used my Red Sparkle yarn. This is Karen Simply Soft Party red sparkle yarn and again I didn't use this for the boy elf I just used it for the girl elf shoes and her hat only so you only need one skein if you do that for the girl elf's dress and for the boy elf part of his outfit I used craft smart value here's some information about this yarn if you can't find this yarn you can use red heart cherry red too. You just need a really beautiful deep red color. You can use any 100% acrylic medium 4 yarn will work for this project. So this color is bright red but again you can use cherry red with the Red Heart yarn as an alternative yarn. I also use this color for the boy's hat, not for the boy's hat, for his um, body and arms for his shirt portion of the outfit and I also used it for the girl elf main dress I used this gorgeous color for the boys elf's hat as well as his main outfit and then I also used it for the girls her part of her dress and for her body and arms so you're going to need two skeins of this deep sea color this is by Red Heart Soft Yarn, and it's just a really beautiful blue colored yarn. And again, the color is called Deep Sea. Now this yarn is by Karen Kindness Yarn. It's by Yarnspirations, and the color of this one is Forest. So it's a really pretty green color and the, again they named it forest green or just forest and you only need one skein of this color for the white yarn I chose I love this yarn super soft super savings but you can use red heart white yarn or any 100 percent acrylic medium 4 yarn and this color is white Here's some information about this yarn. In my dolls, because they have skinny necks, I used a roller in the neck. So you can see the boy neck. He's able to hold his head up well. He has a skinny neck. And that's because I put a roller in his neck too. So I'm going to show you what I used. I use these self-grip rollers by, um, it's also called Voluminous Curls by Conair. And I had used these rollers in my crochet squirrel video tutorial as well. So this is the same pack that I had leftover ones in. So 
I just want to show you a close-up of these. So I used two different sizes. I used this size, blue one. You can see I have plenty more for making more of them if I wanted to. So this is what it looks like. It has little, little wiry bristles and then it's plastic. So it works great for holding the neck in place. So I put half into the head and then half into the body and it works really well. So again, I use this for the girl elf. And I'm going to be showing you, I'll show you how to make the girl elf first, and then I'll show the differences for the boy elf at the end of the video tutorial. So for the head of the boy elf, I made the neck a little smaller, so I used this smaller purple one for his neck. For the cheeks, you can see that there's a little pink blush on the cheeks. So the blush that I used, you can use any pink blush that you want, but I used a pink blush by Almay. So you can see this will last me forever. This is the color. It's a powder blush. So now we're ready to get started. Before I get started, I just wanted to let you know that I have this pattern written out on my blog because I did a crochet along with this blog, with this um, video tutorial for the girl and the boy elf. And you can find my blog on www.helenmaycrochet.com. So this part is optional. If you want to place eyelashes, I used half of the eyelash, one eyelash per doll. And then the eyelashes that I used are by Ever Easy Lashes. You have four and um, an extra one for free. And then I use Gorilla Super Glue and I keep it in a Ziploc bag so it doesn't dry out. And I like the one with the brush on it. And then I just use Scotch Tape to cover the safety eye because if the glue gets on the safety eye then it turns white and then you have to scrape it off of the safety eye. You can have fun with the different colors of yarn. I just wanted to show some of the glitter yarn, glitter sparkle yarn that I used. I found this Red Heart with Love metallic yarn and this one I found at Walmart. I'm just going to show you some information about this yarn. This one is fuchsia colored it's a medium four premium acrylic fiber. And this one's fuchsia. I also have one in red, red sparkle. And I also have a black one, but I don't I don't have it with me right now, but they also have it in a black sparkle. This one is a white sparkle. So again, we're starting with the girl elf, and after I'm finished making the girl elf, I'll show you the differences for the boy elf at the end. So for the girl elf, for her head, you're going to start with the Magnolia Way colored yarn, and we're going to start with the head. So you're going to go ahead and start with a magic circle. So you just drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers, and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go under those two loops around the middle fingers, you're going to bring up a loop, you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to place eight single crochet into the magic circle. So you're going to go under those two loops, you're going to bring up a loop, you have two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. And you're going to repeat this until you have a total of eight single crochet into the magic circle. So that's two, three, four,
And my last one. So now I have a total of eight single crochet into the magic circle. So I'm going to take my forefinger and thumb. I'm going to hold the base of the eight single crochet. I have these two loops on the opposite side. I'm going to go ahead and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. But this one's closing, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. Don't worry if you don't get it all the way closed. We can close it more later. So then you just let go and then you take that loose yarn end and then pull on that. Then you can turn your work so that we can work into the first stitch. And then we're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around, which will give you a total of 16 stitches in the round. So you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around. So I'm going back into the same stitch and bring up a loop, make a single crochet. So you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 16 stitches in the round and then come back. So now I have a total of 16 stitches total in the round. If you still have an opening in the center of your magic circle, just turn your work over and then just gently pull on that loose yarn end on the back and then that will close up the center of your magic circle. Now we're going to continue to increase the number of stitches in the round. So go ahead and get your yarn marker. I'm just using one of my scraps of yarn. Just going to place it right where we left off. And we're going to be making increased rounds chronologically all the way up to one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch. So for our first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have 24 stitches total in the round. So I'm not going to give the stitch count from here out because each increase round that we make just add 8 stitches. And the reason we do that is because we started the center magic circle with 8 single crochet. So now you'll notice that each increase round that I make will be an increase by 8 stitches. So now just take and move your yarn marker up and then for the next increase round you're going to be making one single crochet into two stitches and then you're going to make two single crochet into the third stitch and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now for the last increase round just take and move your yarn marker up and this time you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches. and then you're going to make two single crochet into the fourth stitch and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so now you should have finished with a total of 40 stitches in the round 
Now we're going to maintain that stitch count for eight rounds. So go ahead and move your yarn marker up and this time you're just going to leave your yarn marker in place that way it can help you keep track of the rounds. So you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So only one single crochet into each stitch. So here you can see I finished one round of one single crochet in every stitch and I've reached my yarn marker. So I should you should still have only 40 stitches in the round if you did it correctly. Then instead of taking the yarn marker uh, uh, out, you just leave it in place and then just continue working in rounds. And you're going to continue making one single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of eight rounds completed. And then come back. So now after you finish your eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around, you're ready to place the eye so you can go ahead and remove the yarn marker. And then just leave a little bit of a loop in the back of the head. We'll come back to it in a minute. For now, we're just going to place the eyes. So using the, la the magic circle as a landmark, you're going to count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 rounds. And then just beneath the ninth round, you're going to place one of the safety eyes. So you just kind of wiggle the safety eye in between the crochet stitches and again I'm making I'm placing mine on the opposite side of where we left off on the back and then you're going to count three stitches one two three and then you're going to place your safety eye right across. Now make sure that when you place it that you still have the three stitches in between the eyes and then you also want to make sure that you have it right beneath the ninth row. So make sure that your eyes are level and on the right round. And then once you see that you have your three stitches between the eyes and that they're level, then you can take and place the safety latches on the back. So once you place the safety latch, they're practically impossible to get off. So make sure that you place them after you're happy with the placement of the eyes. So the first thing I do is just take the scotch tape and just cover the eye. and then I'm ready to place my super glue right where I want the eyelash. Before you place the super glue, make sure that you get your eyelash ready. These eyelashes come with a little plastic tweezer, which is what I use to push it down on the super glue. If you don't have one of these, you can also use just a regular Q-tip to push it down. I only want half of the eyelash, so I just make sure that I don't cut it uneven, so I make sure that I cut it in half. So I kind of folded mine to make sure that I had equal halves. And then once you're happy with where you think you want your eyelashes, you can take your glue and then just put place the glue right on the yarn. And then after I put the glue on the yarn, I just take and press the eyelash on the glue and then let it dry. And then I just did the same thing with the other eyelash and then I just make sure that they're even 
and then I let them dry. Don't remove the scotch tape until the glue has dried. And then you can set the head aside for now. We're going to make the hat.